What's up guys and welcome back once again to Chris Aquariums. It's Saturday morning, it's holiday time which means I'm off work, I've got a lot of time to do a lot of things and most of all I have time to spend on this salt water tank. So as always it's the morning, I've woken up, I'm checking in on things and I thought it'd be cool to take you guys around, have a look at what's been going on. As you know, I've been wanting to do a saltwater tank for a long time. I just haven't had the time, the ability, the knowledge, the means, whatever the case. But now is that time. I think I'm at that point in the hobby. And as you can see, we've already started. So as I've said in episode one, this being episode two, I wanted to start off really small, really simple and build my way up from there as I build my knowledge and experience in salt water. So this is a 60 liter tank. It's a tank you've all seen before, which now has two clownfish inside. So over the last few weeks since episode one, I've been setting up the tank, putting together all the equipment. As you can see, we are running a Sobo canister filter, a heater, some Librox substrates, and I'll take you through the equipment now. This tank is 61 centimeters wide, 33 centimeters tall, 32 centimeters deep, which is exactly 64.42 liters. With equipment and rock and substrate, it comes to around 60 liters actual tank size. The canister filter is about a 5 litre size, so overall 65 litre system. So let me take you through the equipment real quick. Let's start from the bottom, we'll make our way up. First off is the substrate, and I used a Seachem Pearl Beach substrate, which is an aragonite mix. 3.5 kilograms and it just covers the bottom of the tank perfectly. I don't want it too thick because then you get anaerobic spaces and places where uh, detritus and organics build up. So the shallower the substrate the better. Then we have the biological filtration, essentially the rock. I chose to go with dry rock over live rock. Live rock rock typically coming from the ocean which means it can bring all kinds of things with it pests and parasites and uh, also you don't want to be taking things from the ocean these days next up is the heater i got a lanson fish 100 watt heater one of the reasons i got it is just because it's very sleek looking then let's talk about probably the most important part the filtration i'm running on this tank a sobo sf 650f canister filter more than enough filtration work for this 60 liter and I must say it's doing a really good job. When I put in the substrate and it clouded up the water, within two hours it was crystal clear. And then inside this filter we've got filter floss and ceramic rings for the mechanical and biological filtration. I'm also going to be running some cable management at some point but I'm just getting everything set up at the moment. Now that canister filter pushes water out the top here, out of multiple holes, and it gives some pretty good water flow. And of course it draws the water in from this side over here, the inlet at the bottom, and then an attached surface skimmer, which is really handy to take any uh, protein or oil film off the top of the water. What I did first is I set up the filter, the heater, and the dry rock, and I let the system cycle. If I'm not mistaken, it was about four weeks but I also used some stability by Seachem just to get the cycle going, get the beneficial bacteria into the system, which made it a lot quicker, but I still spent the time to cycle the tank properly. So I'm busy cleaning out the tank right now, pretty much just cleaning out the bottom, cleaning the glass, disinfecting everything. I've got a helper as well. All right, so this is how I've served the tank so far. It's, um, the first time I set up a canister filter system, it looks pretty neat and tidy. So I'm putting them in like this just so we can start the cycling and to get the beneficial bacteria in the system. But obviously I can rescape it and it'll look a lot different. Now I've got to put in salt. According to the instructions here, I need five cups of salt for 60 liters, which is roughly what the tank is, 64 liters, 17 gallons. Since there's nothing in here, we can actually just mix it in the tank for this first time. That's a lot more salt than I thought it would be. It almost looks like substrate, uh, but that's the right amount. So now I'm going to fill up the tank. The canister filter has been turned on and it seems like it's operating fully and functionally. Pulling in on the right, as you see, the salt still needs to um, mix with the water. And I've just put a wave maker in there to help mix up the salts a bit more. Next up, I've got to put in the prime, uh, get the chlorine out of the water. 
So the salt hasn't finished dissolving properly, but we're going to check out the salinity. It should be between 1.02 and 1.025 gravity. But that's perfect, that's all we're looking for. Then the very last thing we have to do is add in the stability, which is going to jump start the cycling of the tank um, and make it a lot faster for beneficial bacteria to colonize the rock and the filter media. After about four weeks of cycling and using stability, I then got some additional substrate which I put into the tank. And as you can see from the footage to come, it was really messy. <laughs> so we have got the Pearl Beach Seachem substrate, 3.5 kilograms. It should be just enough to cover the bottom of the tank. You don't want anything too thick because it'll build up uh, nutrients. So as soon as it gets, and we're gonna add this thing right now after some rinsing. How beautiful that is. This is getting exciting now. Okay, the substrate is in the tank. And as you can see, I'm clearly not good at rinsing or I don't have enough patience, but it is very cloudy. So luckily I have some of this actually left over and I'm just gonna put some extra filter floss in the canister filter and in a day or two, it should be pretty clear. But luckily with the canister filter, I have it cleaned up in about two hours and it was looking great. I left the tank to settle further for a couple of days and by that time, now that I've got all the equipment, all the cycling, beneficial bacteria, I thought it was time to add the fish, but as you know, I'm a freshwater scrub. I know everything about the freshwater, but salt water, I wasn't certain. So I wanted to make sure that I got the water tested before I put the fish in, just to make sure all the parameters are correct. So if you want to know what we tested for was ammonia, nitrite, nitrate, and salinity. Those were the four that I thought would be pertinent before I added fish. Test came back great, uh, ammonia zero, nitrite zero, nitrate zero, salinity was exactly right. So it was time to get the fish. Let me show you some of the fun footage from that. Went to the fish store, picked out the ones that I wanted. Yeah. Got them bagged up, drove them over to the house. And as you know, what comes after that is the acclimation process. I took my time with this, put the bags in the water for a good 30 minutes. And during that time while the water is acclimating to the temperature, you also want to start mixing in water from the tank to water in the bag so that the parameters become similar and the fish get used to the water conditions before you introduce them. And eventually it was time to add in the clownfish. This was quite an exciting moment for me um, to finally get saltwater fish in a tank. It finally made it real. And as you can see, these guys are absolute tiny, tiny babies, uh, as small as you can probably get them. So I wanted to get them right from the beginning, grow them in this tank, and obviously show you guys the journey as they grow up. Let me show you some footage from these little guys. And that's it for episode two. Guys, we have a saltwater tank, we have saltwater fish, and I'm really excited. I've been wanting to do this for a long time. So if you think this is a bit simple at the moment, it is, that's exactly right. But let me tell you what's gonna be coming up for the tank, what my future plans are. 
First things first, I'm on my way today to get a hang on back skimmer, so that's gonna be added to the system as well. So while you're watching this, just a bit of an update on the skimmer. I'm on my way to pick it up now while I'm busy editing, so why don't I include some of that footage too? Okay, I've just picked it up. Guys, how cool is this little skimmer, man? Look at this. Hanging on the back, skimming the water. It's gonna be awesome. I do need a little pump for it, so I won't be able to install it right away, but this is obviously coming in the future. For the meantime, it's gonna be fish only, uh, these two clownfish, and that's while I get the tank ready, acclimated, um, the parameters of the beneficial bacteria and, and the ammonia and nitrates under control. But eventually, there's gonna be more to come. So there will be more fish coming. You'll see those as time moves along. But the first thing, which will take a while, that's gonna be going in this tank is an anemone. Uh, I don't know if I'm gonna be getting hammer or bubble tip or what the case is, but something that the clownfish can host in, something that doesn't have a high light requirement or calcium or alkalinity. Obviously every coral has a certain level of that, uh, but I wanna start off very simple before I move into the more advanced. So that's what's to come and then it's all uphill from there. Right now we have substrate, rock and fish and as time moves on we'll be having some anemones and corals and from there you know the sky's the limit. So this is the beginning, I'm really excited. Let me show you some more footage of the clownfish, I think they're super cute. And that's going to be it for today's episode. Guys if you want to see more from this tank and my other tank and my pond, Subscribe to the channel, follow along. As you know, I'm here to share my story and I enjoy doing so. And if you have any comments, suggestions, things that you think I should add, I should do, put them in the comments below. And that's about it for today. So thanks so much for watching, guys, and I'll see you next time, as always, on Chris Aquariums.